Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to be with you here today. Um, we're going to do some fun stamping. Uh, we're going to kind of play paper dolls, and I don't know how many of y'all did paper dolls when you were growing up. It was a, a real favorite of mine. I absolutely loved working with them, and you would just kind of have endless possibilities. So that's what we're going to do today. Hey, Grace, I'm glad you're here with me. We are enjoying, continuing to enjoy beautiful, beautiful fall weather, although we do need some rain. So, but that's kind of the way things go. Hey, Jackie and Diana. Hey, Ada K. It's so good to see you. So welcome, welcome. We've got some simple and then some stepped up stamping. I'm totally on the fly. I'm totally going to be um, designing with you. This card has never been produced. <laughs> I've got a few ideas in my head and that's about it. So, um, and I've got my hair in a ponytail, which is means, which you know that if I, if I'm in a ponytail, it's gotta be pretty bad. I was just telling Pat is, um, my friend Pat is here helping me prep for a retreat and um, my hairdresser is out of town. I desperately need a haircut. And I contacted her, I didn't hear back from her and then about 48 hours later she said, hey, I'm out of town. I'm like, ha. Ah. And I always, my hair is like fine until one day it's just not. And that's when I know I need a haircut. So anyway, um, so I better silence my um, thingies because I've got uh, messages trying to come through. Okay, I am on time and we are going to go ahead and bring the camera down and we are going to get working with our paper dolls for today. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let me see what you're seeing. You know, this time of year we're making a lot of Christmas stuff. Um, we do have, in my family, we have a lot of fall birthdays. Um, and then winter birthdays coming up. I actually have a couple of good friends that are Christmas babies. So I always try to do a special uh, kind of winter birthday card for them uh, so that they get something still on their birthday, even though they're sharing their birthday with Jesus. So that's a little bit overshadowed when you share your birthday with the Christ child. So um, this is what I'm keying in on again today. And this is the uh, Peaceful Nativity. There is a beautiful, beautiful set of dies that goes with this. And um, honestly, I think that you can use both of these on their own. There's a bundle price, which is always beautiful because then you get 10% off. And I would highly recommend that because then it's $48 minus 10%. That's almost $5 savings, which is really substantial. But I will say, you can actually stamp, really make really nice cards just with the stamps. And you can also make some pretty cool cards just with the dies. That's what we're going to do today because we're going to be using a silhouette feature. So let's see what I've got here. We're going to do simple and then we're going to step up. So what I've done just for time's sake is I've gone ahead and I have cut out a bunch of the dies. And I've done them in basic black cardstock so that um, I can make a true silhouette image. Now, I saved these for you just so you could see. I mean, you can get the uh, Nativity and the Mary and Joseph, the Holy Family, out of one little piece of four by three cardstock. So this is very, um, they're easy to layer together when you're die cutting. And so that is what I have done. You've got a couple of palm trees. You have a, uh, a donkey and a sheep. So really some fun little pieces. And so these are, it reminded me when I was cutting them out of just paper dolls. So here's our, um, our nativity shelter. Here's our Mary and Joseph with the baby. And I did punch these out of the gold foil sheet. So let's see where we get on. I've got a couple of panels in here of very vanilla. And look at what we can do here. Now, 
Here's where I'm gonna need a lot of input today because like I said, I haven't done this before. I think I'm probably gonna go porch uh, landscape on these because I think portrait's gonna be a little bit cramped. But having said that, let's just try it and see. If we were to go this way, we could put a larger greeting. So this is portrait. And actually I can do these side by side. And that way we can kind of get a true side by side comparison. So let's see if we go here. Hey Velma, I'm glad you joined us. Or we could go this way. So tell me what you prefer if you're liking the landscape or the portrait. And I guess it probably depends on which um, greeting I decide to use. And I will say, you know, the greetings on this one are really nice. They're very pretty font and everything, but they're kind of small. They work well, I will say, if you're doing, um, if you're using the, um, the landscape method, or landscape, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Landscape um, orientation, um, but, I think that if you're using something like this, we do have an absolutely exquisite, all uh, religious, all Christian greeting stamp set this time, which if you're like me and you like to send out um, Christmas cards that express your faith, this one is really perfect. Everything from Christ begin Christmas begins with Christ, for unto us a child is born, a classic Merry Christmas, glory to the newborn king, hark the herald angels sing, sharing with you the glory, wonder, and miracle of this holy season. Oh, come let us adore him. I love the font on this, oh, come let us adore him. Really just taken right out of some Christmas carols. And then this is a beautiful sentiment to put on the inside. This says, may your heart be lifted in praises this Christmas. For the wonderful gift of Jesus and the joy he brings to our lives. So this one is really, uh, really, I think, a must-have for your Christmas collection. Grace, I'm glad you popped in with us. And I'm sorry you have to leave, but I'm glad you're going to catch the video later. So, you know, if you're going to, um, let's just kind of try this out and see where we go. So if we were going to do this, we could maybe go here. And if we were going to do this, let's see, we could go with um, for unto us a child is born. We could do something like that. I, I really kind of like this. Um, so let me know what you're thinking because I think I'm going to make them pretty much, I want to do simple and I want to do stamped up, uh, stepped up. I will say when you do it this way, you don't have room for anything else. If we go with the portrait, we could bring in, um, but you know, sometimes less is more, um, as much as the, um, some of these other things. Now, I will say, the other thing I thought would be really fun is this is a great stamp set and die set for grandkids because um, I haven't tried it, but I think you could take a thin magnet sheet and run it through the Big Shot with these, and then you could put these. I don't know, did any of you guys ever do the color forms? Did your kids ever do those little, they were like a little cutout plastic, and they would stick. And I think you could do something similar with these and um, just set up a little kit for your grandkids that they could play with or if you have young children. And that would be fun. So I think that's going to be a little bit too busy as much as I like all of those little extra pieces. So I think we're going to keep it just really simple. And this is, um, this is our simple and then our stepped up class as it were, our online class that we do every Thursday. So Velma has weighed in. She likes the portrait style, and I think that that is where we're gonna go today. So let me grab a couple of blocks here. <laughs> see, this is classic candy right here. You see that right there? I took that block out, I used it, and I didn't put it back. So I've got two holes there. So, whoa, sorry about that. That 
is a whole box of blocks, which are very, Pat, would you be willing to get me a couple of blocks? Would you be willing to get me a couple of blocks oh, for these two stamps? Thank you, my dear. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've got Pat over here working and I am going to um, grab her and let her help me with this. So I've got this option when I go to um, mount my card. The other option is much softer and that is the bumblebee. Thank you. So um, this is definitely very much softer and this is much stronger. So we're gonna do one of each and let's just see, we'll wait. And you know, one of the things also is you can, thank you, um, you can either pop these up on dimensionals or leave them flat. Now, I just ran these through my Big Boss. I didn't use any kind of adhesive sheets. You could, and that allows these to become stickers, but I had a feeling that I was probably gonna wanna pop these up on dimensionals, at least some of the elements. So um, that's where I'm going to go. Now, let's pop this on here. And this is a really long stamp, and I'm actually gonna stand up because I don't trust myself to stamp it straight, sitting down. Here we go. Oh, come, let us adore him. Beautiful, beautiful stamp. This is a, oh, that needs to be re-inked. Ay, 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 that is not the way I want that to look. So let's flip this over. This is something I do have to go pop off for. I'll be right back because I haven't oriented Pat yet to where my ink, ink refills are. So let's grab that. And let's see where we go. I actually have just finished an ink refill and needed to open up a new one. So this is something that, you know, when you have your stamped images coming out like that, it's actually a pet peeve of mine. I really dislike it when I don't have a really crisp, clear stamped image. Now you can see that since I have inked that up like that, I need to actually let that settle for a minute because otherwise the ink is all right there at the top and I need it to settle into the pad. This is one of the um, linen pads because that is what we have for the, um, the memento ink. So while that's settling, I think what we're gonna do is put a little bit of adhesive on this. And I think what I'm going to use is, I think I'm gonna use this because this is what I have handy. What I have handy over here, oh, look there, that's exactly what I need. Is this open? You know what, let's just open a new one. Here we go. I think this is going to work really well for my little pieces here. And actually, while I've been chit-chatting, this has settled nicely. I think it's gonna work better if I go upside down and then ink that up really well. Make sure I've got a good saturation of ink there. And I got my head in the camera. Let's see if this is better. If this is not better, I have another trick. Haha, <laughs> look at there. Look at the difference. I mean, that's a huge difference between this side and this side. So if you are getting, um, if you are getting a, um, a faint ink, then you'll know what you need to do. Gail, you're asking about a gold background mat. That would actually be, that, that's kind of a nice um, touch that we could consider. Hey, Crystal, I'm glad you're with us. And Susan is here and you're overworking at Darlene's. So fun, fun. Um, let's go ahead and I think that I'm gonna build from the ground up as it were. And I'm, I want them to be popped up and I want the, um, I want my little shelter to be flat. So I'm gonna use these black, and this is where these black dimensionals really come in handy. So that the shadow behind Mary and Joseph 
is going to be dark and not white. And I'll show you what I mean. So they are going to be closest to my sentiment right here. And I want them up. Now you see, let me show you. You see how when you look, when you open the card and you see the side, you see how that is just, there's, it's just all shadow there instead of having that kind of stark white. So I do like these black dimensionals for that. Um, this is, um, the liquid glue, and this is going to allow me to put just a little bit of adhesive there and pop this just like so. See what I mean about paper dolls? You just kind of create your own little scene. Boom. I mean, we're talking really, really quick and easy. I think maybe I might have to cut it in half. No, I think one of these will perfectly fit so that my star is raised and my holy family are raised. And we're talking about a mega quick and easy Christmas card. So there we have done. And I think that what I might do here is just put this, I could pop this right up on on vanilla. I could pop it up on the um, bumblebee or I could, hey Yolanda, I'm glad you joined us, or I could put it on black. So tell me what you're thinking about what we need to do here. And then while you're kind of weighing in on that, I'm going to go ahead and get a second one ready because we're going to do something a little bit different. I want to just step this up with some sponging. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Let's start. We're gonna, we're gonna stamp after we sponge. So I thought what would be cool would be to create a, um, like some light emanating forth from my scene. So let's just create some light here. We'll pop this over here. And let's see what we can do. We're gonna have light coming from above. So Velma's liking the black. And this is Bumblebee ink. And I am going to bring, oh, I got like a, like a little bit of adhesive or something there. I am going to bring this Bumblebee ink in here and just do some circular motions. You know that, like a little something there, some kind of a little goober there. We'll take that off. Okay, let's start down here this time. Let's start with our soft here and then let's build as we go. So we'll cover the whole area first and we'll bring even bring this down just a wee bit. I got a little bit of a smudge there, which I wouldn't. But I think if we just kind of keep going back over it with our Bumblebee ink. This Bumblebee, I chose Bumblebee. It's a little bit softer than Crushed Curry. Crushed Curry would also work well here. I think Daffodil is a little bit too much of a clear yellow. And I'm wanting to um, create this sense of light. And so you need kind of a golden yellow. Let's see how we're doing here. And you know, our Very Vanilla and our Whisper White cardstock are really designed to grab ink. So you can just keep building your color and create a really awesome effect. And you could use several shades, you know, if you wanted to use um, some oranges, if you wanted to bring in some Mango Melody, you could definitely do that. I'm keeping it really simple because this is my stepped up but we're just stepping it up a wee bit. Now, let's see if I can get some of these areas that need a little bit more ink so that I have a little bit more of a consistent saturation. And you can see, you know, as you keep adding ink, it gets like a soft patina finish or patina, depending on how you like to pronounce that. So there, now what's going to happen when I place my holy family on here, where'd they go? You know, I probably need to do a little, um, 
a little wash with my hands because I've been using that ink, um, that little sponge, and I definitely have ink on my fingers, as you can see. So that doesn't look like much right now, but I will show you when we put our black die cuts on there that it's going to come to life. At least that is the way it was in my head, and we shall see if it translates. So now, if we put our family here with the light coming up, and this is why I was thinking maybe, and I don't know that it this might work, although it might be, I might need a contrast and have some black underneath there. Let's move my colored cardstock so you can have a little bit of a clearer look here and be able to see where I'm at. So here we go. Now my other option is to put this on the black. It's very striking on the black with the yellow very high contrast. And then what I'm thinking we might want to add, we could add a bit of this vanilla ribbon with the gold on it. And we could either add it there or we could add it at the top. And I also have this gold shimmer ribbon. Um, although I think I like the, the vanilla better. So I'm waiting to see if anybody is gonna give me any design advice here. And if you're liking my, my uh, light, my show of light, let's see, do we wanna add that now or do we not? Probably not, I think we're still gonna be keeping it super, super simple. Let's see if we can get this in here. No, it really just, ah, there we go. If we were going to add it, this is where I would add it. Hmm, let's see. Maybe like so, or maybe not. Let's see. So Gail, you're liking it on the black and not on the um, bumblebee. Yeah, I think the bumblebee is probably just not the best fit here. Um, I think I might put this one on vanilla or I could put it on black. So let's see, I think I should have one more gold star in here because I think it's gonna make that light really pop. Where, oh, where are you? I'm positive I made a, a second star. Let's see, is anybody seeing it right underneath me? Hmm. Fooey. Well, I'm not seeing it. Hmm. Okay, let's move this. Because I don't think we're going to use that. And let's go ahead and stamp down here at the bottom. And see where we get on. I think I'm going to need another black um, hard base. So let's see if we can nice and inked up and I'm going to stand once again and there is our oh come let ay, 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 I just totally ruined it <laughs> okay well we're gonna start that one over it's a good thing I have more than one of these um, little guys in here I bet the next one's gonna be better anyway. You see what I did? I rocked my stamp. I did a no-no. Yeah, I think the vanilla on the vanilla too. I, I think you you like that too, Gail. I think that is a nice, um, it, it really kind of makes everything stand out because it's, I think it kind of helps you focus on the colors. So let's clean this. You know, I was looking at that stamp and I was inking it up and thought, you know what? I think I'm gonna get a halo. And that's what we call the halo right there. And it's where you have on a red rubber stamp where you pick up that down there. So that's not supposed to happen. So, and I think that blob right there is just gonna bother me. It's like a little divot in the cardstock. So let's just go with this again and let's see where we get on. 
It won't take us but just a minute. Hey, Terry Lynn, I'm glad you joined us. Let me show you. Here's our simple card that we've started with. Simple die cuts with a kind of a, a silhouette image look. I feel like I'm playing paper dolls with all my little cutout pieces and just kind of playing with them and deciding which ones we're going to use and which ones we're going to hold back. Now, I think I'm going to, I'm going to do this right side up for me and it'll be upside down for you, but I think it's gonna help me to get it right. So let's see if we can get this a little better than what I did on the first one. So you can see that as you're adding your, um, your ink, sometimes you'll get these little spongy um, bits and you can just, you just wanna keep blending to blend that out and get more ink on there. And the more ink you add, the more of a patina finish you get on here where it really starts feeling like a, um, gets really soft and smooth. And this works really, really well on both our very vanilla cardstock and our Whisper White. And you'll notice that when you feel those cardstocks, they, they have a real smooth feel. And it is so that they will grab this ink like this but keep it sitting on the top as well. So I think that that is going to be quite nice. So let's see. So Betty, you're liking my card. I'm glad you are. Let's try stamping this again and see if I can actually do it correctly. So, you know, when you teach and then you do exactly what you teach people not to do, yeah, <laughs> that's just kind of the way my week has been. Okay, let's see. So now we go straight on, stamp, and lift. Boom. Okay, that's exactly what I was wanting. So now, it's getting warm in here. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go grab a vanilla card base because I think that might be a really good fit. I mean, look at that. I think that is really, really stunning. Uh, the high contrast makes it very stunning. Um, we may decide less is more. I can add a little bit of vanilla ribbon here, or I could add it here, or maybe we just don't even need it. I'm not entirely sure that we need it. So I'm anxious to hear your comments. Um, I had another gold star here. Cannot find it to save my life. So I think what I'm going to do is I will get a piece of gold and run it through real quick because it just doesn't seem to be appearing. You know, this is the other um, part of the stable that you can do which is kind of fun, has all these little pieces. This is where, like I said, this is like paper dolls. This would be kind of a fun, you know, I wonder if my other piece that I messed up, I just wonder. The ribbon right above the sentiment. Okay, Betty, you like that. I wonder if I could do this. No, that's just ruined. Um, with this other little shelter. This is more like a, well, they're both a stable, but this one has like the stable door and everything. Let's see if I can end up using this. Hmm, that's kind of nice too, isn't it? There you would have this little guy, this little guy. See what I mean about this is like paper dolls? You can just kind of play with these little guys and see what's... That you could do in Oh Come Let Us Adore Him too. And that would be kind of fun. You could pop those maybe in gold or something. So, okay, let's concentrate. Okay, Candy, back to check the floor for the start. Great call, Gail. That is a great call. But I'm still not seeing it. Okay, well, I may just need to get a piece of gold over here. Or I could, I could 
also stamp it. And I'm gonna try it on this piece that I messed up and let's just see what we think about that because that might actually be kind of a cool look and um, because I'm a little bit concerned that gold foil is gonna compete with all this pretty gold um, kind of light um, that we've created here. So let's just see. And because I have one that's messed up, I can do that pretty easily. So that's where your mess ups can end up helping you. Okay, I'm glad you like my card. So let's just try this star like this. It would help if you do it straight. I would do it straight. Okay, what do we think? Do we like the uh, stamped star on top of that little versus using a gold one on here? I think that kind of really brings everything into play here. Let me see, the other thing I could do, I don't think it would show up well enough, but I could even stamp it in Bumblebee. I think it's gonna not show, but let's give it a try. I mean, I told you guys we were going to play today, and I hadn't done this card before, so we are definitely... Oh, I don't want to do it on my good one. That is very subtle, but I think it doesn't show up enough, and I got a halo. So definitely need to trim these stamps a little bit. Whoopsie. Okay. Well, I'm thinking that I like... Yeah, Gail, you're liking that too. I think that's what we're going to do. So I think what I need to do is probably stand up, try this black star out on a couple of, grab my grid paper here. I need to try this out. You know, when you haven't stamped with a particular stamp before, sometimes it's good to just try it out and see if I've mounted it straight. Yeah, see, it's also catching a little bit of extra ink down at the bottom, and I'm not sure if that is, now it's clearing. I think I might have just gotten a little pool of ink in it. So let's try that. Sometimes you need a really light touch on a particular stamp, and I think this is one of those. And I do also think that maybe I might need a little bit, hmm. I think I have everything over here. Let's just try it again and see how we do. Stamp and up. Yeah, it's still pooling down there and I don't like that. Let's see if we can figure out why it's doing that. See how it's really light down here. And it's almost like that is just wanting to pool like there. Ah, okay. You know, maybe there was just a little, maybe there was just a little bit of extra ink in there and I think I've dug it out with my fingernail. Okay, now here we go, the moment of truth. Let's get it and do it correctly. And hopefully I'm going to, this is where I would probably use my Stamparatus. Let's eyeball this and hopefully get it in the middle. Oh, not too bad. It's a little bit going in one direction. It's angled just a wee tiny bit, but hopefully once I put my shelter on here, you won't notice because it'll be so gorgeous. Yeah, let's see. My liquid glue is right in front of me, I'm sure. Let's see, where'd it go? One of my friends, Mary, who's usually on here, offered me on Tuesday, I was so discombobulated, she messaged me and she said, yeah, I'd love to be your assistant. See, this is where I think even an assistant can't help me find my glue when I misplace it. It's like right under my nose, probably. But can I find it? No, I cannot. Is somebody seeing it? Is somebody seeing it and I'm not even... Ay, 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 candy. Where is it? Ah, here we go, way over here. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue right across here and right here and right here. I don't want too much because I don't want it to, you know, that's the thing with the liquid glue, you have to be careful or it will kind of splodge on you. 
and you definitely don't want a splodge. So let's get that star as much above there as I can. It's just going to be a little bit cattywampus. Say la vie. What are you going to do? And I'm upside down, so let's see. Yeah, well, you know, it's handmade. <laughs> and then we're going to do a little bit of vanilla ribbon right across here. So let's... You know, when I get off camera today, I need to restock this area because I've got, I need some stuff over here. Let's grab a glue dot to put on the back of there. So this is the quickest, easiest way to secure your ribbon is to put a little bit of, uh, Mary, I was just talking about you. I just told them that one of my friends who's usually on here had offered me last Tuesday after I was so discombobulated during my life to come over here and be my assistant while I'm on camera. That is a brave, brave thing to offer. And you know, I typically put a knot on here, but I don't think I'm going to do that today. I think I'm going to leave it um, and not put a knot on there. Let's see, maybe we will. Do we want to add the black or do we want to put this on vanilla? Um, this is a decision. Let's see. There it is. You see, when you put it on the bumblebee, it really kind of quiets everything down. Um, this is a vanilla panel. This is not a full on, so I'd have to get a vanilla piece over here. We could go with vanilla. Again, it just kind of causes the... Um, the die cuts to really um, pop and really be emphasized more than anything else. So tell me what you're thinking while I'm finding my black dimensionals, which are right here and are perfect for these silhouette die cuts. So this again is the nativity, where did it go? The nativity bundle. And I think it's a really flash set to um, get from the holiday book. It is Peaceful Nativity. And if you came on a little bit later, you like the black, Terry. Um, if you came on a little bit later, one of the things I mentioned as a possibility for this is to run these through your die cutting machine with a, um, with a magnet sheet and um, put the magnet sheet on some colored cardstock, and then you'd be able to put those down with your grandkids on a cookie sheet or something, and they could just have a lot of fun making their own little scenes. Let me grab some basic black cardstock. of black card bases and I'll show you exactly the way I do that. So let's clean this because that's going to end up getting on something and we are just finalizing our card here doing the final touches on it. So let me clear my space a little bit and Remember that what I'm using here today is the Peaceful Nativity for the die cuts. I actually didn't even use any of the Peaceful Nativity stamps, but I am using the For Unto Us stamp set for the uh, greeting. And I think that it's a beautiful, beautiful set um, that even if you didn't have the die cuts, you could use the... Um, you could use this with some pretty designer paper and make some really nice cards just with that. So there is um, there is that to consider. If you didn't want to invest in the Peaceful Nativity stamps, this right here will allow you to create Reason for the Season cards this year with just some ex really exquisite greetings. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the way I do mine. So I'm gonna run this at four and a quarter and I'm going to run the um, 
scoring blade right here. Is that scoring? It doesn't feel like it. Hmm. That is not Oh, I think my scoring blade's not in all the way. There we go. That's why it's not in. I will tell you that when you go to put these in and out, you definitely need to make sure that your fingers are not in the way of the blade. I did that the other day when I was doing some scoring and I ruined some sheets of designer paper because I got that blade and was cutting my fingers and didn't realize. Now you see what I've done is I've run that at four and a quarter. Now I'm gonna take this like so. Somehow that is not, there we go. Now I'm gonna take this at five and a half and I'm going to cut in half this way so now I don't need my scoring blade. I'm gonna move it. And now I'm going to use my cutting blade and just go right down there. And that gives me two card bases and they're pre-scored. And I just find that you get a much crisper uh, fold on your card base. When you, when you take that little second to do the, um, the fold on there or the crease. So now what I need Let's just go ahead and fold both of these. And what I've, I know you get tired of hearing me say it probably, but hey, Sarah, I'm glad you joined us, is you always want to hide the worm. So there's my little bump there, my little worm. I'm gonna hide it like so. And now I am ready to mount my cards. And I've got my little card. Um, here's my simple. And all I've done is one stamp and some die cuts. That is, I mean, it, it is super simple. And then I will show you our stepped up. I think they're both pretty flash. And I would be proud to give either one. Let's just position that like so. That's ready to go. We did, um, this is just black cardstock, very vanilla, a little bit of gold foil sheet. And then we are going to do the other one we stepped up with some sponging. So I created, a, um, I wanted to create light. I actually intended to make it kind of lighter down here and darker as it went up and I didn't quite get that. Um, my star is a little cattywampus so I may end up die cutting a star to cover that, I'm not sure. But I do like the look of it, um, the black there because I think it, um, I think the gold foil might compete a little bit with this bumblebee um, ink that I've put. So there we have, oh come let us adore him, two different ways, simple and stepped up. The stepped up, we did add some ink and we also added a wee bit of ribbon here and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to add another ribbon like a knot, a tail, um, haven't quite decided yet. So while we're figuring that out, let's see, let's just try it and see what we think. Let's see, I think it would probably go over here if we were gonna do it. And I think it might just not even need to be there. Well, actually, it's nice and trim, we could do that. What do y'all think? A little bit of ribbon there. Just a small ribbon knot. Just kind of, I don't know, a lot of times when I see a ribbon there and it doesn't have a knot or a bow or something, it feels a little bit naked. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put something on the inside and I do think that I'm gonna use this, you like no knot, okay. Let's go without, I'm gonna wait till somebody else weighs in to see what we think. I do think that um, this particular card, because there's a lot going on with the dies, that we might just not need a knot at all. And I think, honestly, when you use this, oh, come let us adore him, I think that this particular uh, sentiment is actually like the coordinating one. I could use this one, but I think this one actually um, makes a nice line between the sponging and the greeting. Okay. Yeah, that's what, um, hey, Paulina, I haven't seen you in a while. It's nice to have you here. 
So yeah, this was, um, Betty had, uh, that was her way in when I was offering to maybe put a little bit of ribbon across there. She said, yeah, she liked it right down there. So let's clean this stamp and put our inside greetings on here. Now Darlene's voting for the knot. So I've got one vote for the knot and one vote for without a knot. So let's see if we get one more vote to, um, to uh, be our tiebreaker. And I've got a couple more of these very vanilla panels. I do find that, I don't know about you guys, I will make a whole bunch of these panels in Very Vanilla and Whisper White at five and a quarter by four. And then I can just grab them because that's the, those are the ones that I use the most. And um, I use them oftentimes for the inside of a card. Let's see. You and Terry Lynn both like the knot. Got knots, I love it. <laughs> Terry Lynn, you always make me laugh. Okay, a knot it is. I will put the knot back in. I think that I'm going to actually stand again to stamp this because, I don't, do you guys stand when you stamp as well? I bet you do. I need to kind of be over the card and sometimes when I'm sitting, I get it more crooked and I say more crooked because I'm prone to get it crooked even when I stand, but it's easier to eyeball it, I think, when you're in a standing position because you're over the, uh, the cardstock so that you can get a true um, view of it. You know, I don't think I have one over here, but I think this stamp set needs a little bit of, um, I think it needs a little bit of a um, sanding, a little wash. Fact, let's just do that really quick. Let me grab my emery board over here since I was using it last night. Let's try this and see what happens. I think that this needs a little bit of, this is a brand new stamp. I haven't used it before. Stamp the little animals. Oh, I love that. That's a great idea. Now I'm just doing a little bit of the um, emery board side, and then I'm gonna use the polish side, and then I'm gonna clean it again because it's gonna have a little bit of residue on it. Now let's just watch and see if there is a transformation on getting this ink onto the cardstock. When you have a brand new stamp, or it also happens sometimes, this is only with red rubber, is if you have a, like a buildup of ink. So let's see. Now, do you see a little bit of a difference there? Not huge. Sometimes you have a real big difference, but this not too much. So maybe it wasn't a problem. So let's grab, I'm gonna grab the little donkey and put him on the inside of my card. I think that's a great idea, Gail. Gail does beautiful work and does so much detail on her cards where you have lots of beauty on the inside and on the outside and on the on the envelope so let's add these little guys here we'll put a little donkey down here oh isn't he cute we'll put a little donkey down here now there we go sharing with you the glory, wonder, wonder, and miracle of, woo, of this holy season. Oh, I like it. These, we are going to pop on the inside of these cards. And I will say that when you're doing multiples, this is a really easy way to do this and use your liquid glue. When you're doing multiples, your liquid is definitely the way to go. It is the most affordable of our adhesives and it gives you the most wiggle room if you need to reposition something. So that is definitely a plus. Pop this right here. I don't wanna get glue where I don't want it though, even with the liquid. I will say it's a little harder to clean up a mess with the liquid than it is with the, um, with the uh, tape, with our seal, Stampin' Seal. 
which I have definitely made friends with now. It took me a little bit of a learning curve to get the hang of using it because it is quite different from our, our snail, which we used for decades. So a little bit of a challenge there. Okay, let's put this knot back on and then we have our simple and then we have our stepped up reason for the season cards. Okay, so Gail is convinced to get the stamp set. Yay. Yay, yay. And I think I need to, I had my ribbon scissors here, and of course, what did I do? I have moved them because I was probably looking for ribbon scissors, and then see, I raid my station over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, and these are definitely not ribbon scissors, so I'm going to end up making it worse. <laughs> I think I'll just not. Let's just not do that. No pun intended there on the not. Let's see if this will work. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, these aren't very sharp either. Well, I'm going to end up making a mess, so I think I will do that when I get my ribbon scissors off camera. Okay, so there we have it. Ideas. Uh, card ideas have a way of selling the set. They do. You're right, Kay. Card ideas do. And I was thinking, you know, I didn't even really use the set much. I was mainly using the dies. But look there on the inside. And I will say, you know, when you're buying the, you might as well just buy the bundle because then you save 10% on the stamps and the um, dies together. So again, this is a combination, kind of a trifecta of excellent, excellent reason for the season. Stamps and dies. That one is a bundle. And then you'll want to add in this one because although I like these greetings, they are quite small and this gives you some really big, bold greetings that make them very quick. Um, Paulina, I gave you an idea for this year's Christmas cards. Yay, that makes me very happy. And I think that um, I would be happy to give either one. The simple, honestly, there is something about the simplicity here that I really just, I think is really pretty special. Um, our stepped up version is a little bit more glamorous, but I think this time I almost prefer the simple. So Paulina, you already have these. You can see how, I mean, you can crank these out so fast. Let me show you something because I think you came on a little bit later. Um, this is what I had done when I was just cutting out everything so I could play with it. And this is why I thought it kind of felt like paper dolls. And you see how you can actually cut out the, the shelter and the holy family out of a piece of four by three. And typically you can do these, you know, two at a time with your big boss. So in other words, you could do two sheets of cardstock. Try that and see, I haven't. But typically you can do two of these. So there you have it. Simple and stepped up stamping reason for the season cards. And I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run through the comments today and I'm going to um, mail these in the, I'm gonna pop these in the mail to two people who commented here today. So I'll scroll through the comments and I will let you know who is going to receive these. I may need to, if I, if I call your name and I don't have, if I don't have your, um, your mailing address, I'll let you know. So what I do when I do uh, comments, uh, when I do drawings from the comments, I just go through all of them and like, let's just say there's 65 comments. I'll plug in the number 65 into random.org and then it says generate uh, a number and it will say like 23 or whatever. And then I just go through and the 23rd comment will get the card in the mail. So these are going in the mail to somebody today and I thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, Susie, I didn't even know you were here today. You were lurking and not letting me see you. I'm so glad you like them. Um, and like I said, I think simple and stepped up, I think I almost, um, I almost like simple better this, this time. So that is it for today. And I thank you so much for joining me. I will be here on Tuesday for Teach Me Tuesday. I think we're going to be doing some sponging again, you know, one of my all-time favorite ways to uh, just have a fun technique on a card. So that's it for today, and thank you so much. I will see you here Tuesday. Uh, take care, and God bless.